our viewer question today. Uh, they have asked, it seems overwhelming to try and follow the recommended dietary allowance for nutrition. How important do you think these guidelines are? Well, that's a very interesting and powerful question, actually. Uh, with most diets, uh, the nutrients, if you're eating whole foods, they, they kind of sort themselves out over time. And some days you'll eat more protein, some less. And over the course of the days and weeks, it sorts out. And vegan diets, plant-based diets, uh, work pretty much the same way. But if you consistently neglect a particular food or set of nutrients, as the months and years go by, you can wind up short change, which can have effect upon your bones and nerves and other tissues. So in general, uh, the sense of the question is important. There's something called nutritionalism. And that's where you're just so obsessed with getting the exact amounts of the nutrients that the RDAs recommend that it takes the joy out of eating. You really don't want to do that. Uh, so the guidelines to help you get past the nutritionalism uh, is this. Uh, there are certain major food groups slash whole foods, because we're really talking about whole foods, that you don't want to neglect. And those one are the protein rich foods. And you really should make it your business to have a generous helping of one of the especially protein rich foods. And we're talking largely uh, members of the legume family, beans, peas, chickpeas, lentils, anything in a pot is a legume. So, so those four should show up on your diet pretty much every day, whether it's a, a scoop or two of lentil stew, a, a bean burrito, a hummus sandwich, some bean chili, uh, but find ways to get Lego, a good cup or two of legumes into your diet every day. Second, there's just no substitute for dark green leafy vegetables. They have so much in the way of calcium, magnesium, uh, and fiber, and, and a number of other nutrients that we really, really need. And so somewhere at lunch, dinner, uh, there should be not only a rich salad with full of dark green lettuce, romaine, and butter lettuce, et cetera, but you want a big helping of something dark and green, kale, chard, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, asparagus, something dark and green, uh, at least, you know, well, every day, either at lunch or at dinner, preferably both. Uh, and, and something yellow needs to appear on your plate, carrots, squash, sweet potatoes, uh, green and yellow, green and yellow are, are your watchword colors for bare bones, if you will, uh, plant-based nutrition. So a proteinaceous feature, a, uh, uh, some green and yellow vegetables will get you most of the way there. And again, if you can do it twice at lunch and dinner, you're going to be uh, well off uh, or better off than if you just have it once a day. Uh, then there's the essential fats uh, that you really don't want to minimize, and uh, those are the uh, omega-3 containing fats in flax seeds, hemp seeds, chia seeds, walnuts, and you should find a way to, to get a couple of tablespoons of ground flax, chia, and or hemp. We have a jar of all three in our fridge, uh, ground up flax, chia, and hemp, and two tablespoons of that goes on every salad, on every bowl of oatmeal that I have in the morning, uh, and I crumble up some walnuts that go on the salad, they go on the, 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 uh, uh, the uh, soups, uh, my cereals, etc. So find ways to get those essential fats in. So, so those four foods, the protein-containing ones, the greens, the yellows, and the, uh, and the essential fats, man, that, that should be a ritual. Those, those should be guidelines that are, that are always functional in your meal planning. Uh, of course, if you're totally plant-based, you need to have that B12 supplement a couple times a week. Uh, and those are your basic requirements. More is better as far as the number of different greens and different, different uh, whole grains, especially quinoa, millet, buckwheat, they're especially rich in protein, so get those in. And nuts and seeds. Uh, again, I already talked about a handful of walnuts, but uh, the other nuts, uh, when we talked about the flax tree and hemp seeds, uh, but, but sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, uh, they should show up as well. 
So if you follow those basic guidelines, you're pretty much going to hit all the bases. You don't have to drive yourself nuts over how much lysine and how much thiamine and how much uh, uh, pyridoxine you got. Uh, eat whole foods uh, in substantial amounts on a regular basis, and, and you pretty much ought to be okay. Uh, uh, Calcium rich foods are important. Again, those greens are important, but I have no problem with some calcium, calcium fortified orange juice to give you another couple hundred milligrams of calcium, calcium fortified soy milks, etc. Uh, I think they have a, a valid uh, place in a plant based diet because uh, uh, calcium uh, deficiency seems to be not that uncommon either. So with just a couple of uh, deferences to uh, some supplemented foods here, uh, I think you ought to be able to get through your eating day without, a, uh, uh, without worrying too much about the actual uh, nutritional recommendations. Now, people may say supplemented foods are not natural, but you know, we're talking about trying to eat healthfully in an unhealthy world. Nobody is eating a quote natural diet. Nobody's eating uh, what the Neanderthals and the Cro-Magnon and the paleo folks did. Those uh, foods have been so modified, they're not available anymore. Now we're talking about eating healthy in today's very unnatural modern world. Uh, and a little calcium fortified orange juice or soy milk, uh, a little extra B12 in there. Uh, helps you meet your requirements. Uh, I think that's just fine. It's not worth getting hung up on the purity argument. So long answer, but it's an important question. And uh, so eat whole foods, eat enough of them. Don't forget the, the uh, vitamin B12. Uh, don't shy away from fortified foods if you see them that give you a little extra in the way of calcium. And uh, you ought to do okay. Hi everyone, Dr. Michael Clapper here announcing our new format for our Q&A with Dr. K. Andy Hagen will be asking me one question that's been sent in by our viewers. So if you want to see if your question is getting answered, do join us for our Q&A with Dr. K right here. Hope to see you then.